Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and the stock to flow model. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Last year, we had a guest on the channel named Plan B. I'm sure most of you know who he is. If you don't know who he is, I, I guess you're living under a rock somewhere. But anyways, Plan B developed the stock to flow model for Bitcoin. And it's an interesting model because it only accounts really for the supply side of things. And in this video, we want to go through and look at the stock to flow model, see where we currently stand and try to extract as much value from the model as we can. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in. Now, the stock to flow model, or the, I should say the stock to flow ratio is just simply divided, it's simply defined as this, the Bitcoin supply divided by the flow of annually new, newly issued Bitcoin. Okay, so it, it you can see that it's a supply, a, a supply focused way to, to really in, investigate where the price of Bitcoin should be as the, the ratio is just defined by the supply of, of total Bitcoin divided by the, the flow. Of, of newly issued Bitcoin. And when you when you really put this all together and you you model out what the price should be, you get this orange line. Now, the first thing I should say about this line is that it does not predict lows or highs. The goal of the stock to flow model is that it predicts average prices. Okay, so it's not saying what the price should be tomorrow or what it might be at a at a future peak or at a future bottom. It's just saying, you know what? The average price of Bitcoin based on this model should be X. Okay, that's what it's doing. So remember, it's not meant to track mania phases or, or undervaluation phases. It's just to show what the average price is. It's a common misconception with the stock to flow model. Now, when you look at this model, you can see we have the halvings drawn in. This is the, the, the dashed lines. And you can see that big, the, the, the price of Bitcoin does, historically anyways, it's done pretty well following the halving. Okay? And, and you can see the, 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 the stock-to-flow ratio and therefore the, stock, the, the price that the stock-to-flow model would predict has, it, has this sort of moving, moving higher during this, you know, during this phase. Okay? At, right after the halving. And then at some point, you know, it, 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 it levels off. Right? At some point, it levels off for a while. Now... The interesting thing, in my opinion, about this model is the deviation. And this is something that, that Plan B talks about himself. And furthermore, the deviation is something that we also look at with the logarithmic regression curves, right? We look at, we look at the deviation from, say, like the, the, the price and the fair value. This is a great thing to do. You want to look at, at, at the deviation to try to understand, you know, where, it, where are things with respect to the model. Now, look at this. When you look closely, you'll see that an early on the price during the mania phase far exceeded what the stock to flow model would would have predicted. Far exceeded it. Later on, we we started to flirt with that with that value even more. We actually went under it for a little bit. During the third after the third cycle or after the second halving, you can see that the stock to flow model did a really good job of showing where the price of Bitcoin should be. And the argument, okay, is, is there a trend in the deviation of the price with respect to the stock-to-flow model? I mean, look, we, we can see that at least so far, the stock-to-flow model um, has been a little too optimistic. But I mean, given, given that the price of Bitcoin was, you know, at a few thousand dollars not that long ago, and to see how well the, the price actually tracked the stock-to-flow model right after the halving, I mean... This, it, it still is a, a useful model, in my opinion. One of the things I, I you know, just to, to go off on a little rant here, and this is something I find with my models too, you know, all models are wrong. All of them. Every single model we talk about on this channel, all of them are wrong. Some of them are useful. And I want to show how you can take a model and try to extract the value from it, right? Extract the value. Look for trends. Mine the data. Don't just look at something and say, well, you know, it's not on the it's not on the squiggly line, therefore there's no value. No, it's not true, right? You, you need to search for the value. The value oftentimes can be found. You just know how to search, you just need to know how to search for it. 
So in this case, what we're looking at specifically is the deviation of the price of Bitcoin and the stock to flow predicted price, right? We're looking at the deviation. So we're, we're calling it the deflection, right? This is what it, this is what he calls it, right? We're looking at the deflection. And the deflection is just the price of Bitcoin divided by the stock to flow price, okay? It is a measure of how far the stock to flow ratio deviates from where, where the actual price is. So if we click on that, this is what you get. Huh, pretty interesting trend, isn't it? It actually looks quite familiar to some degree, very familiar. The chart I just showed you, right? Look at the logarithmic regression curve. You look at the price over the fair value. You could call it the, def the, the deflection. Look, the, the, the peaks deviate down, but in the, with the logarithmic regression, the bottoms don't really deviate that much, right? Because the, with logarithmic regression, we're assuming we're going to see diminishing returns, okay? So you can see the bottoms don't really deviate, but the tops, the tops do, meaning the asset class isn't quite having the same blow off tops that it had once upon a time. You see the same thing here, right? You, you see the same thing. Look, look, if I, if I go over here and I, I, I just show you the lines, look at the tops, the same thing. The deviation to the upside is down. The deviation to the downside is also down. So what does it show? How can we extract the value from this, from this chart? Well, in one sense, from the logarithmic regression curve charts, we see the deviation happens to the upside, but not the downside. In this one, it's both on the upside and the downside. So maybe there's a, a pattern there, right? Maybe there's a pattern on the downside deviation. I mean, look, drawing imaginary lines, it, you know, I don't know, I don't know, it's not something you can take to the bank, but if you look at the overall trend of the market, you can see there's a fairly clear channel that this, that this has been in for a long time, the deviation of the price of Bitcoin with respect to the stock to flow price. Okay, so mania phases are, are slightly deviated to the downside, but also the lows are slightly deviated to the downside. We're not even that far away from where this deviation would occur. I mean, if Bitcoin were to drop back to the low 30K region, I imagine we would be back to that historical low deviation downtrend channel. So this is the point. You know, it, it can be easy to dismiss something because maybe because we don't understand it or, or because it's not exactly where, where we want it to be at any given time. But you can extract the value if you know where to look, okay? So this chart shows one way to extract some of that value and to try to identify potential future mania phases if we're, if we're coming back up to the top of the channel or undervaluation phases as we stay near the lower bound of the channel. So the argument here is that there is a somewhat predictable deviation from the stock to flow, right? So what does that mean? Well, what it means is that we can see the that we can see the deflection has been has been sort of decreasing with time. And now we're under this area. But here's something to consider. We could still go north of 100k before the next halving. I mean, it is possible. I know a lot of people don't believe it. But it is possible, right? It is possible that we could go north of 100K before the next halving. But to some degree, that, that is largely irrelevant on exactly when it occurs. But I, I would say that, you know, the stock to flow model out in 2025, 20, late 2025, and then in 2026 is predicting an average price of 1.3 million. So I will say that I do think that as time goes on, the price of Bitcoin will deviate more from what the stock to flow price would predict. But it doesn't mean that the model isn't useful. You just look at the deflection between what that model predicts and what the actual price is. And that, I think, is where the value is. That's really where I think the value is. And so if one day we're looking at, at, at this channel here and saying, you know what? We're getting somewhat close. Imagine the price comes back up to the upper bound channel at around one or something, or maybe a little bit above one, the next, whenever that occurs. So let's say it goes a little bit above one, which I mean is where it is right now. If it were to do that, you're, you're talking about, you know, you're, you're really talking about Bitcoin going over, over six figures in the next couple of years, if it were to go over one in the next couple of years which means that that could be the, 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 the deflection that represents the top of the, of the channel, of the downtrend channel. So look, there, there, there's a lot of way to, to look at models, 
there's there's a lot of things we can do to extract information from them, okay? One thing we always need to remind ourselves on a constant basis is that no matter how great we think our model is, how how incredible it, you know it's going to be, all of them are wrong. All of them, every single one. There's not a model out there that will not be wrong in some way eventually, okay? So the goal is to take every model and find where it's useful. All models are wrong, some are useful. And I think, in my opinion, looking at the deflection of the price and the stock to flow predicted price, there's a lot of value there. I, I do think an average price of 1.3 million, um, you know, after the next halving, it's probably a little too optimistic. And I think that clearly because the deflection is going down, doesn't mean we can't go to a few hundred K, right? I mean, it doesn't mean we can't go to, you know, 300, 400 K by 2026, but are we going to go to 1.3, 1.4 million? Probably not, unfortunately, right? Is it something that I would like to see? Of course, who doesn't want to see Bitcoin go to $1 million in three years, right? Who Or four years, who doesn't want to see that? Everyone probably want to see that. Is it likely to happen? Well, if it would, if it does happen, it's completely changing the, the trend that we have on the deflection, which is something that, that Plan B, I believe, has shown himself. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. We have the sale on the premium list at IntoTheCryptoVerse.com. That's going to end in four days. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.